What's up, YouTubers? So i got an interesting video for you guys today. We're outside of the shop, imagine that. It's pretty nice out, at least nicer than it has been, which is like cold and snowy. So I got a job today that we're gonna do together. This plate here, this that I put an X and the bottom on this tow truck are starting to get war. This truck's got probably like 100,000 miles on it and has done a ton of tows. Well, this occasionally rubs on the ground when you're lifting vehicles. Same thing with the upper arms, which you probably can't see. They need some repair too. But the guy wants some uh, either hard surfacing, hard face rods run on it or some AR500 or basically wear resistant steel welded onto this so that it wears on that rather than a boom. Not a bad idea. So what we're gonna do today is put a piece of uh, AR500 here here and on the bottom and then we're gonna repair the arms. So that's what I got going, let's get into it. So first things first, I'm gonna clean up an area here. Now I'm not gonna plate this whole thing with AR500, I'm gonna do the where it's wearing. And this isn't too war, this plate down here is actually far worse and the bottom one is definitely not in good shape. So about right here and up. For this initial grinding, I'm just using a hard rock I prefer it, it removes more material than a flap disc. All right, so got this buffed up. I generally use a hard rock as a first pass and then I just buff it with a uh, like 80 grit or 60 grit flap disc just to kind of get any kind of like sharp burrs off of it. So, the only plate of AR500 that I have is this guy. And I wanna make sure that I have enough to pad everything else. So I could do it like this, which would leave me, yeah, more than enough. So I'm gonna do is mark it right here. And then mark it about right there. I'm gonna go cut this out. You could use a torch. I'm gonna to just, yeah, I'll probably use a torch, maybe an angle grinder, I'll figure that out. And actually, yeah. I'm also gonna mark this whole location. So about right there, about right there. Yep. Oh, sorry about bumping the camera there. Let me steady you up. I'm not sure what these holes are used for. I believe it's to pin the arms in a downward position as like a safety. The guy said he's never used them, so kind of interesting there. So that's a rough idea what we got going on there. I'm gonna cut this and then I'll be back. As you can see, I got the three plates cut up here. I cleaned up all the edges on them. I torch cut these because being that this is AR500, it would take forever to angle grind cut it. But torch cut it, buff the edge just to clean the little bit uh, rough of a cut that I had. Looks all good. So now that both sides are clean, I can tack these up and actually fully weld them. So let's get into that. All right, so I'm gonna end up holding this. I don't have a C-clamp big enough currently. Well, I do, I just too lazy to go and get it. But I'm gonna tack this in place and then I'm gonna heat this whole thing up with a torch. Uh, with AR500 steel, you definitely wanna get it uh, hot, like, I don't know, at least a 300 degree preheat before you weld it. One of these days I'll have to do a video on how to use a torch. I'm not that great at cutting with one, but I use one on a pretty often basis. Very handy tool to have. So 
So this is quarter inch plate being welded onto, I believe it was like five eighths or three quarter inch plate. Pretty thick stuff. Amperage wise, I'm running eighth inch 7018s at probably about 130 amps, maybe a tad bit more on the top. The sides I ran 130 amps, which was a little bit close to too hot, but I was able to handle it. Generally speaking, you want to weld vertical up. I know in a lot of processes, vertical down is easier, but easier doesn't mean better. And in a case of welding uphill, downhill, when you weld downhill, you lose a lot of penetration unless you're talking like open roof pipe or something. So you generally want to avoid welding downhill. Not to mention, 7018 is not spec to be run downhill. If you look at the sheets from any supplier, they always say all position except downhill. So depending on what you're welding on, if it's code work, you may be in violation of code welding it downhill. You can do it. I've done it. I don't care for it. Just weld it uphill. All right, sorry about the break there, my crazy neighbors stopped by. So anyways, I'm gonna tack up this corner, finish tacking it up, clean it up, preheat it just a little bit, and then weld it. One of the joys of actually welding on stuff that isn't on a bench is you have to find creative ways to position your hands. Now, I would have liked to have clamped like a big vice grip or something and rested my elbow on it and done it that way. I'm just barely resting the stinger on my thumb, which it worked until a molten ball of slag right there fell on the thumb and it's still burning. So you want to be careful with that. Keep your thumb away from the falling molten metal. So here I'm just freestanding with no prop. Again, anytime you can find a way to prop, it's in your best interest. Your weld will come out smoother and better. Now, another thing I want to mention is there's hydraulic hoses and all sorts of crap that runs through this boom. Being that this plate is half inch, three quarter inch thick in numerous places, I wasn't too worried about smoking hydraulic hoses. But the grease that's all over everything on the backside definitely got hot enough to start smoking. Something you want to think of welding on stuff like this, like if you need to preheat it, so be it. But you want to be careful because if you get it too hot, you can melt hydraulic hoses or something. So be smart about it. probably sounds a little bit ridiculous but doing like test welds on flat plate and overhead for lap welds and just fillets that all correlates to what I'm doing here if you can't do a fillet weld overhead really good then doing this is going to be even harder because I'm kneeling on one knee with my hands resting I mean this is a lot harder than doing it freestanding in a shop or a uh, like a weld booth so much harder to get a decent bead going on this just because I'm so out of position. 
it would have almost been easier to get a chair and sit in it than this, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. So here I'm resting my hand on the inner part of my elbow and I'm just lifting my arm up, my left arm, to keep feeding the rod in and increasing the height. And you're going to see I'm going to collapse my arm into it. I find that this works pretty good because uh, you see the rod, it's staying pretty steady and that's the whole goal here. So I switched here, I forgot to hit record, and I missed the first weld there. Now you can see I stuck the rod there, I'm not really sure what happened, but I ended up polishing it, it looked pretty good, and then I just welded through it, and it turned out pretty good. Here welding the bottom plate, again not that much different than what you would do in a welding test booth or just practice, it's just a longer weld than you probably used to. Alright, so I got this top plate burned in. Got that guy burned in, and then I got the bottom one, everything, whoa, but the very bottom of it. So the very bottom of it I still have to uh, put in. Oh, let me zoom out here. So that's all looking pretty good. Now I got to repair this and the one on the other side a little bit. I tried to get footage of fixing this, but the sun out really obscured the you. This is a finger that goes around the tire. I welded on a bunch of hard face on it so it stops wearing. This one, which was worn almost halfway through, I welded a plate and then welded beads of hard face on it. So to wrap things up, we basically welded on some plates just to add wear protection. Now I definitely could have stitch welded these where I only put small lengths of weld just to make it easier to remove them at a later time. But honestly, I think that those plates will outlast a truck. I mean, it's a very nice truck with only like 90,000 on it. But let's face it, it, if it didn't completely wear through what was there and that was nowhere near as abrasion resistant as AR500, then that plate I welded on there will last forever, for or at least for as long as this guy's going to own it. Then the next guy, I mean, it'd be easy enough to grind the welds out to remove the plate and replace the plate. And it's far cheaper to replace a wearable item than it is a whole boom. So anyways, thanks for sticking around, guys. I appreciate it. If you got any comments, questions, concerns, you know where to put them. Thanks.